In this lesson, we will review the osteology of the hand, consider the various bones and joints that participate in the formation of the wrist joint, as well as the remainder of the hand. Let's start by looking at a line drawing of the right hand and review the skeleton pieces. And to begin this, we will add the distal ends of the two forearm bones, the radius and the ulna. So this is the end of the ulna, the distal end, and this is the distal end of the radius. And the distal ends of these two bones, the ulna and radius, form a joint that is known as the distal radio-ulnar joint, which is seen right here. This joint, along with its proximal counterpart, the proximal radio-ulnar joint, participate in the movement of pronation and supination. The distal ends of these two bones, the radius and ulna, articulate with the small bones of the wrist known as the carpal bones, sometimes collectively called the carpus. Each of these carpal bones has a unique structure. It has a name. We're not going to review all of these, but only a few that have high level of clinical significance. The first one of these is a bone that is seen on this side here, on the medial side of the wrist and is known as the pisiform bone. And it's named after its shape, which is a pea-like. And it is the site for attachment of one of the forearm muscles known as flexor carpi ulnaris. There's another important carpal bone known as the lunate. And it is named because of its shape being a moon-shaped bone, as specifically as it is seen in its lateral profile. This bone, the lunate, is often dislocated from its anatomical position as a result of injury, and uh, it's, uh, it has some consequences with chronic wrist pain. The most important, uh, arguably, the most important uh, carpal bone is this one on this side, which is seen on the radial side here, the scaphoid. It's one of the larger of the carpal bones and is often injured and in fact results in a fracture of through the scaphoid bone, which uh, is sometimes notorious uh, because it doesn't heal very well and can also be a cause for chronic uh, wrist pain and disability. So these are some of the important carpal bones uh, that are often seen in clinical uh, cases and therefore uh, good to keep in mind. The next set of bones are known as the metacarpals and they're seen here, five in number, one for the thumb and then the remaining digits, the fingers. And these articulate at their proximal end with the carpal bones. And their distal ends, these, carpal, these metacarpal bones, articulate with the phalanges. The phalanges are many, they are divided or subclassified into proximal phalanges as seen here, the middle phalanges as seen here, and then the distal phalanges as seen here. Note that the thumb has only two phalanges and are named as the proximal and distal phalanges. It does not have a middle phalanx. There are a number of joints. I alluded to the joints between the base of the metacarpal and the carpal bones, and these are collectively known as the carpometacarpal joints. There's one at the base of each of these digits. The next set of joints are known as the metacarpophalangeal joints, or the MCP joints, and these are at the distal end of the metacarpals, where they articulate with the bases of the proximal phalanx. The other remaining joints are collectively known as interphalangeal joints. In each of the fingers, we have two of these joints. They're known as proximal and distal interphalangeal joints, PIP and DIP. The thumb has only one interphalangeal joint and is simply called the interphalangeal joint. It doesn't have a qualifier in terms of being proximal or distal since there's only one joint. Now each of these digits has a name and often in clinical practice uh, one might be tempted to use a numerical uh, labeling of these digits and they're often described as first, second, third, and so on. Uh, it's often uh, a recipe for some confusion because um, for, for many reasons. One of those reasons is that the number of digits may not always be five. 
So if you look at the little diagram in the right upper hand corner, it shows five digits at the moment, but it could easily be a, a patient with six digits. And so the confusion is where do you start numbering? Do you start numbering from the thumb side and then towards the little finger or in the reverse direction? And so to avoid these confusions in terms of number and the sequence, it's often good practice to use the name that describes the digit. And so you can call the index finger, as seen here, the middle finger, the ring finger, and then the little finger by their names, and then the thumb by its name as the thumb. This avoids any opportunity for causing any confusion in documentation as well as in communication. Let's now look at a simple x-ray of the hand and the wrist joint. These are primarily focused on the wrist, but it has a little bit of the hand as well. It doesn't have the full hand, as you will note. What is uh, apparent in this first x-ray, which is an AP or an anteroposterior view, are the distal ends of the radius and ulna labeled as R and U here. We can also see the base of the metacarpal. The carpal bones are seen as well, and the one that is labeled here is the scaphoid with an S. Let me also show you uh, the lunate bone, which is adjacent to the scaphoid, and you'll recognize that uh, from the line di diagram in the previous slide. We can also look at an oblique view as seen here. This is an oblique view, so it's not quite an AP, but not quite a lateral view. And in this case as well, you can see most of the same bones. Uh, the key element here is the scaphoid. And this view is often done to actually assess the scaphoid when one is suspecting fracture of the scaphoid bone. Obviously, the other bones are also visible, such as the distal end of the radius and ulna, and then the metacarpals more distally. Note that in a lateral view, as seen here on the right side of your screen, you can see a very different uh, architecture. The key element here in order to get you oriented is a bone that you see almost sticking out. It's almost out of sync with the other carpal bones and it's labeled here with a P. This is the pisiform bone and you don't see this very clearly in, a, in the oblique view or in the AP view. And this underscores the idea of doing uh, and creating different views of x-rays in order to focus in on different anatomical structures. And the wrist is a fairly complex structure and different views are very helpful in depicting different structures within this complex anatomy and then being able to make a clinical diagnosis.